Okay, let's talk about solving this polynomial equation. And uh, the equation is 3x times x minus 2 times uh, 2x plus 5 is equal to 0. And uh, this would be a typical type of uh, algebra problem, maybe like an algebra uh, 1, definitely like an algebra 2 or college algebra or beyond. But the techniques I'm going to be showing you here um, are kind of go to uh, even basic algebra as well. So you're going to want to stick around. Uh, to see how this is solved. So even if you're not taking this yet in your algebra class or math class, you're going to definitely learn something. But uh, we're talking about polynomial equations specifically in this problem. So it's a good idea to uh, review what a polynomial is. And then obviously, I'm going to teach you how to solve this particular equation. This stuff will not be that difficult. And uh, you absolutely need to know how to solve polynomial equations in algebra. So we're going to get to this in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of the video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. I have all the main courses like pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2. Going to be launching pre-calculus uh, here shortly. I have college algebra, introductory algebra. But I have a lot of specialty courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for tests like the GED, SAT, ACT, um, ASVAB, uh, boy, there's so many of them, uh, GRE, GMAT, uh, Accuplacer, CLEP, uh, you get the idea. Maybe it's a teacher certification or a nursing entrance exam. A lot of people have to take very important exams, and these exams have a lot of mathematics on them. So if you don't get through the math, you're not going to pass the exam, and that's going to have uh, serious negative consequences for your goal. So uh, just go to my website, check out my full course catalog. If you're uh, studying for one of these exams, you can kind of uh, should have your course or your exam there, uh, test prep course for exam. If I don't, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. I also work um, a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. I have a great homeschool learning uh, program. And then obviously I help those of you who are just in class. So maybe you're taking algebra or algebra two and you're struggling, can definitely help you out. But one thing you have to be doing to help yourself out uh, to improve and really learn mathematics is to take great math notes. Over decades of teaching mathematics, one thing is absolutely cl uh, crystal clear to me. Those students who take excellent math notes almost always do very, very well in math. And the reverse is true. Those students who like to look at their cell phone or talk to their friends in class uh, of course, I did all these things myself, uh, but in the 1980s, our cell phones were gigantic, uh, and they cost like $5,000, so nobody had them, and you couldn't do anything cool uh, like surf the internet, because really, the internet wasn't even around then, so, you know, listen, you get the idea, but don't worry about it. We have plenty of other ways to be distracted, so uh, here's the deal. If you don't stay focused and engaged when you're learning math, you're not going to learn math, okay? And the only way you're going to uh, remain focused is to give yourself an activity to force you to be focused. And that's note taking. Note taking is all about uh, staying focused and engaged. There's just too much information coming your way. So take a look at your notes, think about it, and be like, well, can I read my notes? Could I give my notes to someone else? Uh, could they learn from my notes? If your notes should be, you want to strive for your notes to be like a textbook, like perfect. Like you can give them to somebody else and they can actually learn math by just reading your, your notes. Okay. I've seen uh, students' notes to that level, uh, super impressive. That's what you want to be striving for. So most of you have. Um, you know, a lot of uh, room to improve. But as you're improving, um, I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You find links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so let's get into this equation. Again, if you think you um, can solve this, okay, I would encourage you to pause the video and just kind of whip up your solution. So that's always kind of a good way to make them uh, the best use out of this particular video. But uh, what I want to do here real quick is define polynomial, okay? And then obviously we're dealing with an equation. So in mathematics, anything with an equal symbol like this is an equation, okay, in an algebra. But let's talk about what a polynomial is. So what is a polynomial? So let's go down here. All right, so a polynomial, and I don't want to go into a full-on technical definition, but I want to just kind of give you some basics here. So a polynomial will have a variable or variables. Let's just use the variable um, x. Now, this particular, um, we call this a term. There's going to be two components to it. We're going to have some sort of 
exponent, okay, and we're going to have some sort of number in front of it that's going to be called a coefficient. So this whole thing here will be called a term, okay? So for example, uh, 3x squared, all right? This thing here is called the coefficient. The x is the variable. The little 2 here is called the exponent. And this is, in fact, a polynomial, and that is a one-term uh, polynomial or a monomial. Now, I can string a bunch of these guys together. So let's say I have 3x squared plus 7x cubed uh, plus uh, 8x to the fifth. Now, I have a term, a term, a term. This is now a three-term polynomial. So this little guy right here is a small little polynomial called a monomial. So we can build larger uh, polynomials from uh, these respective terms. But the reason why I'm being um, really focusing in on the definition of a polynomial is because uh, the techniques, when we solve equations in algebra, if I'm saying this is a polynomial equation, there's a lot of rules that come into play specifically for polynomials and only polynomials. Uh, and oftentimes students can confuse other things that look like polynomials better are not, and then they use the wrong technique. So just spending a quick second here to review. Now, here is kind of the, the, the main kicker here with these terms, okay? This is really, really critical. Our coefficient, the number in front of the, uh, the x or y, you can have multiple variables too, x, y, z, doesn't make a difference. But this guy, the number in front of it, this can be any real number, all right? So... It could be a decimal, it could be like negative 1.9, it could be two thirds, it could be 106, doesn't make a difference. It can be any real number in front of the X and that's perfectly fine to be a polynomial. However, what's very restrictive is our power, our exponent. This is key, okay? So this is where I really want you to pay attention. The exponents, uh, to, uh, to those variables can only be, okay, uh, positive integers. And so you're talking about 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. okay? Not negative, not negative, from 0 and above, okay? So x to the 0, y, uh, y to the 1st, z to the 5th, these are okay, okay? Uh, but if I had x to the negative 3, mm, not a polynomial. If I had z to the negative two-fifths, not a polynomial. You're dealing with something else, okay, in mathematics. Of course, we, we'll need to know how to solve that, but you just need to uh, know, you know, when you're dealing in mathematics, when you're talking about certain definitions, because we you know, see that word all the time in algebra, polynomials, polynomials this, polynomials that, da 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 Well, do you really know what a polynomial is? You need to know... Um, the precise definitions of these uh, these terms, okay? All right, now let's get to this equation. So that's what a polynomial is, and you can see here, we are in fact dealing with a polynomial equation. So the great thing about this guy is this is going to be super easy, okay? Now, why is this going to be easy? Because we're going to be able to employ something called the zero product, let me write this out, property. The zero product property. Now, what is that? Well, check this out. We have these things being multiplied together. We have a 3x, okay, and we're multiplying it by an x minus 2, and we're multiplying it by uh, this thing, by 2x uh, plus 5. So think of it. I have like three things. I have uh, this times this times this, and I'm drawing these little figures here. It's equal to zero. These things represent numbers or values, right? So if I told you, hey, I have three different things, three different numbers or values, I multiply them all together and my answer is zero, what does that tell us about one or all of these things? Okay, how can you get zero as an answer? The only way you can get zero uh, as your final answer if you're multiplying is that one of these or all of these has to be zero. So 100 times zero, that's a zero, okay? Uh, if I have uh, 100 times 5,000, times uh, zero, that's a zero, okay? Or maybe this could be zero times zero times zero, that's gonna be equal to zero. But the, the main idea here, the zero product property is the following. If we could set up um, our equation where we're solving equations, okay, and we can have our factors, in other words, these are factors, and they're being, these are, uh, uh, the factors means that these guys are being multiplied, okay? This is a factor, 
factor factor, but this is multiplication. If it's set equal to zero, we can employ the zero product property, meaning that one or all of these must be equal to zero. So we're going to set this equal to zero, this equal to zero, and this equal to zero, and then solve. So we got 3x. Okay, you're probably equal to zero. We don't know, but we're going to assume you're zero. Uh, x minus 2, you're going to be zero. And 2x plus 5, you're going to be zero as well. This is a zero product property because this, again, our factors, it's equal to zero. Now we can uh, solve the respective uh, remaining equations for zero. So how do I solve 3x is equal to zero? We divide both sides the equation by 3. I get x is equal to zero. Okay, here... Um, uh, x minus 2 is equal to 0. That's super easy. Uh, the solution there is x equals 2. If you're having any trouble with this, by the way, you can check out my um, uh, videos on basic equation solving in my pre-algebra or algebra playlist. But if you're watching this video and you're struggling with these basic equations, then this is kind of maybe too advanced for you. All right, so 2x uh, plus 5 is equal to 0. I have 2x is equal to negative 5 or x is equal to negative 5 halves. So we have three unique solutions to this equation. So these are our solutions. We are done. But let's talk uh, one more uh, about one more thing here. What you don't want to do is multiply all these together. Because if you do, you're going to end up with a, a cube, a cubic. You'll end up with a third degree polynomial equation. You'll end up with something with, uh, to the third power. But uh, uh, if you did go that route, one, that's the wrong way to go. Then you're going to have to kind of undo all of that to get back to your factors. In fact, you always want to try to factor things. You always want to try to take advantage of the zero product property. It's one of the best techniques to solve equations. Uh, so when, look out for it. Okay, And oftentimes this might look difficult, but it's actually quite simple when you see problems set up this way. But uh, the point here I'm trying to make is that if you did multiply this, you would end up with some third degree polynomial. And in algebra, if you have a polynomial equation... Okay, we have something called the fundamental theorem of algebra, which states that the degree, okay, which is the highest power of a polynomial, the degree is equal to the number of solutions you're going to have. Okay, so if I did multiply all these together, I would end up with a third degree polynomial. In other words, that's highest power would be, be uh, three. So that means there must be three solutions. It can be either real or complex. And I'm, you know, getting into bigger, broader topics here. But you can see here that we do have three unique real number solutions, x equals 0, x equals 2, and x equals negative 5 halves. So that is it. And in fact, if you got this right and you understood exactly what you were doing, I would say definitely give yourself a happy face, throw on a mohawk for good order, an A plus and a 100%. And I'll give you one star as this was not too difficult. But if you understood all that stuff about polynomials, I'll give you another star. So very, very good. Again, polynomial equations are uh, everywhere in algebra, okay? And, and you just, you know, and beyond. So if you're taking, let's say, Algebra 1, ultimately you'll be taking Algebra 2, and then you'll go on to pre-calculus. I mean, you're, you're being, this entire time, uh, your knowledge of polynomials is going to be growing and growing and growing. I mean, polynomials are everywhere, and they're even in calculus for sure. So we love polynomials. There's a lot of reasons to love them, uh, and they're uh, used everywhere in mathematics. So it's a good idea to know a lot about them. And hopefully this video has helped you out. And if that's the case, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a long time. Um, 10 plus years have uh, probably well over a thousand uh, videos on my channel organized from basic to advanced math. So the, all of that stuff is there for you and I'm posting new stuff all the time. But my best math help will be found in my math help program. Of course, you know where to find those links in the description. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.